So, today's topic is ergonomics. We are going to study what is the role of ergonomics in the design of textile products. And we will see there are a lot of uh, in lot of uh, uh, influence of ergonomics on the design of many many textile products. First of all, if you look at this slide, what do you see here? We see has few pens. Now, if you see the pen as a writing instrument, then you see all the pens can write, but what are the differences between them? The differences are one is color, the other one is size. In the size, if you see that there are some pens which are quite fat or thick, there are certain pens which are quite thin. Now, why these differences? That is, some are fat, some are thin. The color differences we can all say is because of the beauty aspect or aesthetic aspects that is what is important for us. But what is the reason that some the for some pens the gripping part where we are gripping the pen with our fingers this region is thick and somewhere in some pens they are thin. Similarly, if you look at the size of the buttons you see that we also get buttons of different sizes which are used in the uniforms or dresses. Some buttons are quite large in terms of their diameters, some buttons are small. Now, why these differences are there? These are all a part of ergonomics. Similarly, if you look at the another example is the where the buttons or button holes are there in a let us say in a in a shirt that I am wearing also or all of you will be using it, you will see that the button holes are on the left hand side, the holes are here, whereas the buttons are there on the right hand part of the front part of the shirt. Now, why this? Why the buttons are there on the right hand front part of the shirt and the button holes are there on the left hand part of the shirt. Now, if you try to find try to find out answer to these questions, then these are all a part of basically ergonomics and we are going to study or discuss we can say this aspect in the design of textile products. Obviously, ergonomics is a very big subject by itself and we are not going to learn everything about ergonomics here, we are going to only learn very few principles of ergonomics, so that we can make use of these principles in the design activity. Now, if I try to give an answer to the, the question that I raised that why is the gripping area of the pen is thick in some situations and thin in some other situations. Now, this all depends upon the age of the person who is using this pen. If you want to give a pen to a toddler who is just going to learn how to write, then you see that if you give him a thin pen, gripping will be difficult by that child. So, to improve the gripping on the pen the gripping part has to be made little thicker. Similarly, by the time a person is very old that is he crosses the age of maybe 70 or so and his fingers may be trembling and joints are becoming less and less inflexible. For such persons also, we need to increase the gripping area of the pen and therefore, they are little larger in diameters. So, but for adults and for school going children a thin pen is fine, but even then the pens are not too thin also because finally, we have to grip it 
and we have to have control on the movement of the pen on a piece of paper. So, therefore, the gripping aspect has been taken care of by many pen designers. So, there are many ways they have done it and uh, if you look at the design of different pens, you will find that in some cases that they in order to improve the gripping aspect, they have made the region while we are you know, holding the pen, they are not smooth, they are little rough, so that it does not slip easily or that could be a, a simple rubber band over there, so that it gives little bit of softness and also the grip can improve. So, these are basically part of ergonomics. Similarly, the case of button also. You can think of that buttons generally which is used for older people, it has to be little larger in size, so that they can grip the button and then they can you now push it through the uh, button hole easily. So, for improved gripping and then to pass it through the button hole, we make the button little larger in size for the dressage which are meant for old people. Anyway, we are going to discuss more and more about it. Now, let us go to the next slide. What is the definition of ergonomics? Ergonomics relates to the understanding of the interaction among human and other elements of a system. This is in a very you know uh, precisely if you want to define what exactly ergonomics is, then this is what is ergonomics. Now, what is the objective? The objective are to optimize human well being. Whenever there is interaction between a human and the external environment that or the external you know, objects which the human is going to use, then we have to make sure that the, the human well being part has to be taken care of. What exactly does it mean? As you go through the course, we will learn about them, we will know about them. And the other aspect is overall system performance also another objective of the ergonomy. That is, we want to other we want to actually optimize or improve the performance of the system as a whole. So, there are two important aspects in the design where ergonomics play an important role. Now, the, this slide what you see here that ergonomics borrows knowledge from various fields and what are those various fields? One is physiology, the other one is psychology, next is toxicology, mechanical engineering, industrial design, biomechanics. From these areas knowledge is borrowed and they become a part of ergonomics. So, ergonomics contribute to the solution of problems related to safety aspects that there is the person who is going to use them for his or her work, the safety aspect has to be taken care of in the design, so that he or she does not get injured. We have to also look into the health aspects. Sometimes the health of the person may deteriorate because of the working either in a particular environment or with a particular machine or tools whatever it is, health aspect also has to be taken care of, the comfort of the person also has to be taken care of and the efficiency of the person. So, that the design has to be such that ultimately efficiency improves. Many failures and accidents are due to poor 
an inadequate relationship between operators and their task. So, you have to this has been found that many times accidents may happen in a industry or when a person is working in some other organizations and if we try to find out or investigate the reason for this we will find that the relationship between the operator and the task is such that the person there was some injury to the person or some accident that happened or something which is almost inevitable. Now, let us go to the next slide factors relevant for ergonomic study. What are the factors which are relevant? One is body postures and body movement. This is one factor which will be relevant for studying ergonomics that is sitting, standing, lifting, pulling, pushing whatever a person is doing while he is working. So, while he is working what is the posture of the body and how the body is moving these are important aspect or of the ergonomic study. Next is the environment factor, the environment in which a person is made to work. Somebody may be working in a quiet room, some people working in the open area outside the field, somebody is working in an industrial environment. So, the environments are different and therefore, the kind of stress which will be developing on the person also will be different. So, environmental factors needs to be seen where noise, vibration, illumination, climatic conditions, chemical substances around this needs to be taken care of. Next is informations and operations. Information gained visually or the control, the relationship between display and control. These are the facts which we have to keep in mind. The other one is the work organization that is the appropriate tasks or interesting jobs, what sort of task has been given to him, how to make it more and more interesting that is all about work organization. So, these are the various factors that comes into play while we are going for ergonomic design of any product. Now, ergonomic principle. What we have to remember is the variability in the population is always there. We all know that human beings are of different sizes, different shapes, they have different weight, different height, different volume. The variability in population is such that most design in the first instance suits around 95 percent of the populations. It means the design is less than optimum for 5 percent of the users. Therefore, equipment, technical system and tux have to be designed in such a way that they suit to every user. So, while designing something, we have to keep in mind that a designer does not really see the user, but he or she has to keep in mind that the way he is going to design it should suit all types of people which are there because they are, they are their potential customers. So, it should suit everybody. So, that kind of flexibility has to be there in the design. People who need additional attention from ergonomics perspective are which people? You see some images are coming. So, we have as I said earlier there are people who are short or tall. There are all types of people around us. Then there are people who are overweight, people who are handicapped old people, young people, there are toddlers, 
there are babies, there are pregnant women. So all types of people are around us and we have to think that depending upon the type of products that we are making, where there are our potential customers and therefore the way I have to design that should be such that it suits each and every type of people around us. Now that is should be the ideal situation, how far we will be able to achieve it that depends upon the type of product, sometimes we may not be able to achieve that is a product which could suit everybody, but then there could be some modifications and um, some adjustment may be possible so as to make it suitable to each and every one. Let us discuss about posture and movement now. Posture and movement are imposed by task and the workplace. What kind of task and the workplace? Poor postures and movement lead to mechanical stresses on muscles, ligaments and joints resulting in pains of the neck, back, shoulder, wrist and other parts. So posture, movement, see in the garment industry the way the workers are going to you know, uh, work on different types of machines which are there, different types of sewing machines which are there and you see the way the, their postures are, their movements of hand, the movements of neck, eyes, everything needs to be studied and you have to see that how to harmonize the movement so that the stress level is less idea is this that how to reduce stress on them while they are working. Next is some movements may not only produce local stress but require expenditure of energy on the part of the muscles, heart and lungs resulting exhaustions and fatigue. This is also possible. So you see here the there is a you know, image at the bottom of the slide which gives you different types of postures of people who are working and you see some people are there is bending, someone is twisting, someone hands are raised. So there are varieties of posture depending upon kind of activity in which the person is engaged, especially those who are doing some physical work. Biomechanical principle is also very much useful. In biomechanics, the physical laws of mechanics are applied to the human body in order to estimate the local mechanical stress on muscles and joints. In the case of textile, let us say we use, we make or we design pressure socks, anti-gravity suits for the pilots, especially for fighter jet pilots. Then the other thing is skin chafing is also is there in some cases. So how to avoid that? Then shoulder strap that we have to design so that the stress on the shoulder can be minimized or the, the pressure on the shoulder can be minimized. So these are just few examples, there are many more examples which will be there and there, there these pressures or, you know, is or abrasion are going to actually work on our muscles on our tissue sometimes they are loaded and uh, the skin may be abraded sometimes. So these are basically a part of biomechanics and we have to see that what is the implication of the design on of certain items which can develop mechanical stress on the muscles and joints and how to reduce that. So here the two pictures have been given, 
one is of n t g suits this one and this one a time top a, a kind of pressure shocks where pressure is being applied. There are various designs of pressure shocks and the many, many types of pressure shocks we apply pressures on different parts of the body for varieties of reason. So, we have to see what is the right amount of pressure that we require and how to design a product which will give you the exactly that level of pressure and can I regulate the pressure also that is also could be another aspect of the design so that we can regulate, we can increase it or decrease it. So, the design should be flexible enough to take care of this aspect also and we have to see whether the pressure should not decay with time. The whatever pressure you know, socks or say anti-G suits whatever we design, we will also see whether it is comfortable or not. So, there are many aspects. So, biomechanical is one aspect, comfort could be another aspect. Now, physiological principle is limit the energy expenditure in the tusk. Most people like can carry out a prolonged tusk without experiencing any general fatigue provided the energy demand of the tux does not exceed 250 watt. So, there are certain tasks where the energy demand may be 250 watt or less. In that case, the fatigue may not sets in. Activities that consume less than 250 watts are simple writing. Suppose, I am sitting on a chair and the table is there in front of me, just I am writing or I am typing or ironing or gentle walk, leisurely cycle ride. These are where the amount of energy demand for these physical works are much less and therefore, the possibilities of fatigue to set in quickly may not be there, but if it is prolonged sitting or prolonged typing, then also there may be some amount of sometimes we feel pain in our fingers or while writing where also there is a posture, the postures may vary from person to person and because of the wrong postures there may be some pain could be there. So, you have to change the postures in those cases, especially people who are office goers and working on a you know in a situation where the entire day they are spending with a table and chair like those who are working in IT industry the whole day 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours simply goes sitting on a chair and the computer is there. So, therefore, in those cases the prolonged sitting for a long long time may lead to some kind of disturbance in the postures and therefore, it can lead to some amount of pain either in the neck or in the shoulder it is very common that in IT industry people suffer from such kind of ache in the body. Other thing is rest after heavy tusk. So, if the energy demand during a tusk exceeds 250 watt where the lot of physical activities are involved then additional rest is necessary to recover and this could be in the form of breaks at regular intervals than at a stretch. So, there is a mandatory requirement that people must be given rest, especially the workers or laborers who are working in the industry like in our textile mills. After a work of 4 hours, we give a recess to the workers because their work is such that energy demand is much more and therefore, they need rest and this is there is government regulations that we have to give them rest after certain period of time. So, this is what is all about that heavy tasks if somebody is doing then rest is necessary.
So, here some activity and energy expenditures data are given just for your information. Working while carrying a load of 30 kilo at 40 kilometer per hour, the energy expenditure is 370 watt. Frequent lifting work of 1 kg, 1 per second, 600 watt. Running 10 kilometer per hour speed, 670 watt. Cycling 20 kilometers per hour, 670 watt. Climbing stairs, which are at 30 degree angle and at 1 kilometer per hour speed, the energy expenditure is 960 watt. So, if you are climbing the stairs in a high rise building and if you go from bottom to the 10th floor, then you will understand that you are getting tired. Why? Because you are spending much large amount of energy. This is almost 1000 watt of energy that you are spending. And hence, once you climb 6th floor, 7th floor or 10th floor, you should immediately sit down and take rest. You get exhausted. So, this is we have to keep in mind, these are part of ergonomics. The other aspects in the design of clothing especially is anthropometry. Anthropometry is all about the size of human being, the size of different parts of the body and the overall height of a person. These are very, very, very important for the design of those textile products where a person is going to use it in the sense that they are going to wear it and then use it. So, all kind of dress material comes under this, so where anthropometry will be very much in use. All types of shoes, gloves that we wear, anything that we wear, their anthropometric principles will be very, very relevant. Now, anthropometry that is static anthropometry, dynamic anthropometry and kinetic anthropometry. What are these? We are going to discuss static anthropometry is it deals with all static dimensions of the body, that is when the person is at simple rest either standing or sitting postures. What are the static dimensions of the human body? Dynamic anthropometry is it deals with the forces necessary for the movement of a man or woman, how much force is acting on it on the different parts of the body. And kinetic anthropometry is it deals with the scope of human movements, hands and legs, how far hands and legs will move. Accordingly, we have to design. If I have to design a sitting area of a person, then we need to know how far his hands and legs are going to move. Accordingly, we have to design the sitting area of the person. That is the kinetic anthropometry aspects. So, these are the three anthropometric aspects. They are important. Static anthropometry in more details if we go, it deals with static dimensions of the body and why it is relevant? Designing machines and tools. A machine that a person is going to use or tools that he is going to use while we are trying to design them. Suppose you are going to design a textile machine, a spinning machine or for that matter any other machines where a human is going to work. We have to keep in mind what is the height of the person, what is the length of the arm. These aspects will be very, very important. So, height of the upper arm, length of forearm with the fist, hand, what is the length of the hand, hand width, diameter of the clenched fist. These are some examples. So, designing of workplace as I said is important in the case of static anthropometry. 
body height, body height in sitting positions, width of the body in elbow joint, width of the body in sitting postures, length of upper leg, width of upper leg, length of lower leg, all such dimensions we have to take in a sitting postures of the persons. These are all required for designing the workplace, that is designing the specific chair or the uh, desk or the table which, which should be used by that person. Then comes dynamic anthropometry, it deals with the forces necessary for the movement of the person, how much force is required by the person to move. Externally simple division of body is in torso, head, forearm, elbow and internally is forces and torque in the joints. This becomes important because for performing a task, the person has to apply certain amount of force or he has to apply certain amount of torque. So, these aspects will be relevant for dynamic anthropometry. and kinetic anthropometry deals with the scope of human movements and range of human movements that how far the hands and legs and waist will move. So, the movement can get restricted by the design of the clothing part. So, if we design a uniform or design a dress especially for some workers then it can restrict his movement. Let us say it could be firefighters clothing or their uniform or a soldiers uniform. We have to make sure that the design should not restrict the movements of the different limbs of the human. Otherwise, his performance is going to go down. So, these aspects will be kinetic anthropometry like some pictures are given here. The extent of movement and then measurement, we, do, we measure it using this called goniometer. We try to measure the angular movement in different planes of different parts of the human body. Okay. Next comes factors influencing anthropometric data. The first important factor is the age. After the age of 40 years, people get smaller because of wearing of the rings in the spine. So, people become little shorter you know, as they age. You will find old people sometimes they become short, the height reduces because of the wearing in the spine. Then populations wise anthropometric data may vary depending upon different regions. The people body dimension may change like in India maybe the western uh, part of the population, western part of India population their body dimensions will be little larger than the people who are from the eastern part of the country. On an average, that is what we will see. So, there is, is a population wise, it may vary, gender wise, there may be differences. Forces that are applied during use, you have to remember this that is, women are 30 percent weaker while applying a certain force. So, if something has to be designed for a woman, we know that the on an average, the force that they will be able to apply will be 30 percent weaker. Training of men can increase his power by 15 to 50 percent. Clothing design, it can affect the scope of movement. As I said earlier also, that in the design of the clothing, the scope of movement can get restricted and you have to be very, very serious about this aspect of the design in certain type of on a products which are very, very critical or a person involved in very, very you know in some activity 
which is also very, very critical in nature. Sometimes light and death could be there, situation may arise because of the bad design of the clothing. Anthometric principle, anthometry deals with the size and proportion of human body. As I said, it is basically all about the size and proportion of human body and anthometric principles related to postures and movements are difference in body size. So, the designer must bear in mind the differences in body size of the user. Sometimes, shortest user has to be considered in mind and sometimes it could be the opposite. So, for designing control panel which has to be wrist with the arm and sometimes tallest, let's, let us say door height. So, if we are building a house and we have to decide about the height of the door, then you have to keep in mind the height of the tallest people. So, you have to think that even they should be able to enter and therefore, you have to choose a height of the door frame which will allow even very tall people to enter easily. Whether the designing of a control panel, like control panel in a car or uh, we have to think that there sometimes a short person may able to should be able to drive the car. So, control panel should be such that he or she should be able to look at the control panel and control actions can be taken by him. Other one is posture, it is imposed by the task or the workplace, prolonged posture can lead to complaints, this already we have discussed. The anthropometric data, the data are collected and applied to design products in order to make them more comfortable to use. Anthropometric data is used to determine what size, shape and form of a product, making it more comfortable for humans to use and easier to use. And therefore, anthropometric data collection is important. The application of measurements to product in order to improve their human use is called ergonomics. This is all ergonomics is all about. So, anthropometry, ergonomics are very close to each other, they are connected here like say I have shown a human body, how the overall height of the body and if you see that the, uh, you know, the dimensions of different parts of the human body, they are being shown here in this diagram, how to measure the, let us say, anthropometric data related to a palm, also shown here and what are the different you now data we should collect, that is all given here. It is just an example just to show you that when you I need to collect such data in order to design something, we have to keep in mind ki what are the data we need to collect. Now, unless we have you know, the complete information about that, otherwise we will not be able to, we will be missing some you know, data. So, these are some examples which are given here and uh, <coughs> here data is given for a child A, B, C, D two different data are given, this A is what? A is this one, this is your A and B is the width, this is your B. So, these two values are given just an example for how many childs? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 child and then you find out what is the total and then what is the average. So, just to get an average values, but you see that if I make a design, suppose I want to design a glove and design based on this average, then you will see that for some children it will fit very well, for some children it will be little smaller in size, for some it will be little loose. That means, if I design a product based on the average value only, we will not be able to satisfy all our customers. 
this is another example of uh, just to show ki how to measure body size the different parts of the bodies which are generally measured is also shown here then athometric data for design consideration as i said is also being repeated again the average dimensions of a man cannot be used in the design because as i said it will not fulfill the need of the entire populations design should satisfy fifth or 95th percentile of people that is what is generally done because you also have to think that no i cannot have the you know, design which will suit each and every individual person i have to somehow group the persons and design a project which will suit a group of people if not the entire population so the interesting part of it is that if there is a population data available with you how to make groups and what is the logic behind the you know deciding about the size of those groups people average by two dimensions represent only 70 per 7 percent of the population the other aspect is and four dimensions so that means a person suppose i think about person and his body dimensions if i choose there are so many variables no height is one variable total height then height of the leg is one variable height of the hand is another variable then width of the shoulder is another variable so there are so many variables which are there to describe the overall size of a person then the grouping becomes much more difficult average is not sufficient and the range data has to be used so if many of you must have you know experience that when you go to a mall and try to buy either a trouser or a or a shirt then you will find that it is fitting very well to some people it is not fitting well to others so it is all because the whatever size is there that particular size is only suit a group of people so there are a lot of research also which are going on to decide about the sizing part now what about size charts which are there they are mainly is coming from european side charts or they are coming from america so american side charts are there indian side charts is yet to you know evolve here let us say just an example the automatic design is shown like let us say distribution of certain parameters and as it is shown here that it is let's say their normal dis normal distribution is uh, applicable to some parameters whatever the parameter is now if i make a design where i am satisfying only this this part of the population is called procrustes design that is this design will only suit these people rest of the people will not be not suitable for the rest or if i design only for this part as uh, shown here then it is meant designed for tall people only and it will satisfy probably this area of the population similarly ego design design for adjustability is somewhat you design something and then there will be some adjusting point so that the person can adjust to suit his or her own size so this is designed by mean designed for more types there is a grouping of data here designed for all can i design which will suit the entire population which is sometimes we say it is you no know, a design which can fits this is a fit for all design it is generally difficult to design uh, something which will suit each and every person this is another example of this the door design that um, this is the 
distribution elbow height is here and at that height the door handle is there and then the height of the person is somewhere here. So, it will satisfy the, uh, the maximum population with the maximum frequency, but then there is some allowance is there here. So, that even the tall person comes they also will be they can also enter through the door. So, that means when we think of a door design we have to keep in mind the distribution which will suit almost 95 percent of the populations. There may be some extraordinary tall people, but generally they are very very rare usually in India mostly people will be of maximum six and a half feet. If you think of a door frame which is eight feet it will suit most of the people. Atomatic data for design considerations. For atomatic variable, there is a law to predict the relatively uniform growth of different body dimensions. Sitting height, arm length, length of upper arm, forearm, length of lower leg and height in relation to the body height. So, if I know the body height, there are certain rule through which we can then predict what would be the arm length, what could be the length of upper arm, forearm like that. So, there are certain rules that have been framed and that is what is called there is a law to predict the relatively uniform growth of different body dimensions in relation to the body height. The height is known, one parameter is known, probably other parameters to some extent can be predicted. Anthropometric dimensions may change over time due to change in eating habits and that it should be updated every 10 years. You may sometimes find a report that the Chinese people their average height has increased or Japanese people the average height has increased over the last 30 years or 40 years. Why it has happened? Even in India it is also happening. It is because of more nutritious food that people are eating nowadays because of improvement in the economy. There are group differences in data relation to race, sex, age, ethnicity also could be there that also you have to consider. So, in the ergonomics and clothing design, biomechanical issues are there where the important part is, is the clothing restrictive to the various postures and body movement that are essential to perform a certain task or does it give support to muscles so as to enhance performance of the user. These two are relevant to the design of clothing. We are not going to design a working space from the textile design point of view, we are going to design mostly clothing and related articles. So, these are the two things which will be important that is, is it restrictive to various postures of the body movement or is giving support to muscles and enhance the performance. That is what is also being done. We can improve muscle support for the players who are playing hockey, football or even uh, cricket. Physiological issues does the clothing ensemble increases energy consumptions? This question will come. Does it lead to discomfort due to sweating and chill feeling? Does it give enough protection from environmental hazards? These are the physiological issues and anthropometric issues could be has the differences in body size been accounted? Anyway, this is another you know, similar figure that we have seen earlier that is while you are trying to measure different dimensions of the body from the clothing you know, design point of view, these are the various dimensions that we need to measure. Freedom of movement that the body movement such as bending causes the skin on elbows and knees to stretch by 50 percent you remember. Skin is such a no, it is such a beautifully designed that whenever we move our limbs, we never feel a stress because the skin is stretching, but the skin 
has been designed by nature in such a way that it stretches so easily that we even do not come to know there is no feeling about it. So here if you know that when you bend the skin can stretch 50 percent that means if something is there which is passing over the skin if there is a garment we have to remember that the skin there is going to stretch by 50 percent and garment should allow the screen to stretch by so much 50 percent and there is chance of relative movement between the screen and the skin and the and the, and the uh, part of the garment and this relative motion can cause abrasion these aspects we have to keep in mind movement involved in sports require even more stretch that means the garment has to be designed in such a way or the fabric that we have to choose that it should also respond in a similar fashion. So in a particular area if the screen stretches by 50 percent in that area whatever fabric component is there that should also stretch but at least that percentage whatever 50 percent or 30 percent or 40 percent whatever it is. The differences in skin's elasticity and that of the clothing may cause serious restriction to the movement of the wearer and a consequence will be affect his performance. As I said if the skin cannot extend or skin extends but the fabric cannot extend then there is a possibility of restriction in the movement of the person and therefore it can affect the performance. So some data about the stretching of the skin is given here, buttock area can stretch, skin can stretch by 4 to 6 percent, chest, back it can stretch 13 to 16 percent, along the knee in a full dress state this screen is stretching maximum 34 to 45 percent, around the knee in full dress state 12 to 14 percent, if one is around and the other one is along. So that much stretch is there in the skin. So the skin is designed in such beautifully that we do not even feel that. Now clothing type, clothing in C2 mechanical behavior is related to the fabric mechanical properties and space allowance between the body and garment during body movement. So clothing type according to the degree of space or allowance which has been given, see whatever we are wearing you see there is a degree of there is a space between the body and the, the garment that we are wearing. Now there are certain foundation garments where the garment area is less than the body area. There are perfectly fitting garment, garment area is not plus is equal to the body area and there are loose fitting garments or garment area is greater than the body area. So there are basically the garments could be three different types, one is the size is less than the body area, the other one is equal to body area perfect fitting garments and the loose fitting garments or the garments are little more than the body area and you see all the three types of garments are there which are used. 